Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Fixture Form. I am Silent Mike, your hostess with the mostest. This is where I take your forms. I try to help you guys improve your lifts. If you want to get involved, we need three reps, 70%. High definition filming, a filmed horizontal sent to ask, M-I-K-K-E, at gmail.com, and we will get you involved. We're starting out with conventional deadlifts. Ladies and gentlemen, grab your non-alcoholic beverages, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, take out a notepad, and let's get learned. My man. Step number one for all deadlifts, what we need to do is focus on keeping that barbell as close to our body as we can. Often you see people wear long socks, maybe even a knee sleeve on the shin. That's because this barbell is going to beat up your shins a little bit, but that's the proper way to deadlift. It's going to take pressure off your back. It's going to make the bar path more efficient, and it's also going to allow you to lift more weight. And you know what more weight means? More gain. So, my friend, move that stance in just a little bit. Right before you're getting started to pull, I want you to pull your lats in. And basically what you're going to try to do is pull that barbell as hard as you can into your legs. There's a little bit of gap there. And that, again, is just putting more load into your low back. So what we're going to do is pull that thing into our shins. We're going to drop our chin just a little bit. Uh, you're wrenching on your neck. Again, neutral spine might be a little bit overrated. We don't have to have a perfectly neutral spine, but we don't want our neck wrenched and our chin way up so that it affects the position of our back or our hips. So tuck that chin a little bit. I'd say move that stance in a hair. Really pull that barbell up into your legs. And then watch those toesies, bro, because I've dropped a 25-pound plate from eye height, free falling, like Tom Petty. Free falling, yeah, free falling, straight onto my second toe. And now my second toe is a similar shape to my thumb. So, look, you can do what you want to do, bro, but I suggest wearing some sneakers while you're getting your gains. And you guys are welcome. You can give this a thumbs up for the Tom Petty rendition that I just put out there. I mean... Look, it's not a 10 out of 10, but it's definitely an 8.5 out of 10, and you're welcome. More conventional pulls right here. Let's see what we got. Overall, looks really, really good, man. Looks like you might have a little bit of a soft shoe going. I can't really tell, but for all lifters, we want the flattest, stiffest shoe we can find. Um, that's going to allow us to transfer our power. We're not going to be wiggling around. You know, basketball shoes, running shoes, everything of that nature is made to absorb some of the shock of running. Well, in lifting, we don't want any stability issues. We want to be able to push our entire foot into the ground. And that's another thing, first tip for you, my man, your toes raise a little bit. And people say push through your heels or lean back. That is true. But both in the, the squat and the deadlift in particular, we want our big toe, our little toe, and our heel planted firmly into the ground. I often think about pressing the middle foot, almost my arch, into the ground. And that allows me to keep my entire foot planted and stable. Second thing is I would try to get your weight back a little bit. You're a little bit in front of the bar, which isn't bad. It just turns it into a, a hair of a stiff leg, and you're jerking on a little bit. So right before you set, you set your lats well, you set your back well, and then you rush a little bit. So set that back, set that lats, lean back. We want your shoulders over the bar, directly over, not in front. You can see where the barbell is and where your shoulders. That's putting extra pressure into that mid and low back and not taking uh, – uh, account into our hammies and glutes we want to take advantage of those so you're going to lean back and then you're going to begin to pull last but not least at the lockout there you have a little bit of soft knee action you can see right there you're not fully locked out so we always at the top we want to think about standing as tall as we can i think about someone pulling my head from a cord a cord from the top of my head if that makes some sense i'm going to flex my quads and flex my glutes and chances are you'll lock out perfectly every single time a hundred percent of the time one percent of the time my man here, more conventional pulls. Looks like he's kind of doing a block pull. He's got like a little inch there, which can affect how you pull. Overall, it looks pretty solid, man. Uh, I, I can only see half of you. Uh, it's a beautiful half, but I can only see half. So try to try to get some good videos in here if you can, squad. Uh, the better the video from you, the better the coaching from me. Um, but overall, I'd say really good. It looks a little heavier than 70%. Those hips raise a hair, um, which isn't a big deal. Basically, what we want to do is make things most efficient as we can, right? When you pull on a, on a conventional deadlift, your hips, if they're too low, they will raise until the most optimal leverage so that the bar will move. They'll move on their own. So what we're going to try to do as lifters to be the most efficient optimal lifters we can we want to find that position that our hips need to be in and that's going to depend on how uh, you're built how long your torso is how long your thigh or femurs are uh, and as how long your arms are so for my man right here might as well just start with your hips a bit higher and the reason we do that 
uh, is that we can find the tension better and be more efficient. So yes, you know the the, the two inches our hips raise before the bar raise isn't um, wasting that much energy or time or anything, but that means that there's probably not enough tension. So if we find the perfect height, the perfect position to start in, both conventional and sumo, then that allows us to then focus on the other things like getting as tight as we can. And hopefully after repetition after repetition, we start thinking about the deadlift, the squat, the bench, overhead press, whatever you're doing, like a free throw or Tiger Woods at the golf range, just hitting everything perfectly. Then when it becomes, you know, 85, 90, 95, hundred percent of our max, all we can do is focus on pushing or pulling as hard as we can. Once we have our technique down and we have so many hours in the gym focusing on that technique over and over and over, then when it comes game time, all we do is let our body do the work and our mind is just focusing on pushing and pulling as hard as we can. We're moving into our first sumo pulls of the day and overall, my man, it looks really, really good. Um, I'd like to see a front angle. I don't know if we have that. So knees are a hair forward. Um, often what, what happens with the sumo is everyone thinks about having the widest stance they can to cut down range of motion all this and range of motion is a, a, an issue it can help right if we if we have a shorter range of motion but if you start thinking about the squat there's a lot of huge squatters with a moderate stance right so it's not always just the stance that's going to and range of motion that's going to allow us to lift more weight it's it's better to be optimal and so your knees being a little bit forward and your body being a little bit over the bar what i'd suggest is moving that stance in and what that allows most people to do is push out your knees a little bit further what we want is our shin pretty vertical and we want our knees directly over our midfoot at the bottom of the sumo at the start position of the sumo uh, and just telling by how you're built right here that's going to allow you to be not a little even more upright and get that little wiggle off of the ground uh, you're trying to find tension because you're a little off balance right there but if you move that stance in about an inch each side maybe even two force those knees out and then i would also move that head up onto the horizon that's going to allow you to stay a little bit more balanced and I think get the most optimal position. I, and, and I don't know how you're doing the concentration right there. I'd be pissed if homeboy is walking right in front of me while I'm trying to pull. Gym etiquette, ladies and gentlemen. Every sport has a little bit of the etiquette. You know, in golf, it's standing behind the the, 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 the person who's hitting. It's being quiet. It's not talking, right? It's, it's being nice to the grass. You got to fix your divots, things like that. And bowling, it's a similar thing. If you're in a lane right next to somebody, you don't bowl at the same time somebody doing it. You wait off of the wood, right? And in lifting, you don't walk directly in front of someone mid-squat or even mid-deadlift. Uh, from this angle, it looks a little bit better, uh, but I still think because your femurs are kind of small, your little uh, thighs, not small, sorry, bro, your quads are jacked. Don't let anyone tell you any different jacked quads, but they're a little bit shorter, even like myself, and that's why everyone talks about semi-sumo or whatever you want to call it, but it's actually just a sumo deadlift with a position that's that's made the way you're built. So let's move that stance in, take advantage of those smaller femurs, sorry jacked quads and short femurs and uh really keep forcing those knees out man overall though uh super super clean sumo if i do say so myself you're you're 90 there with a couple tweaks uh you're really going to smash some big weights i can tell the future i can see it happening they don't know it's true i was going to go into a disney song but i forgot the rest of the lyrics i'm sorry i, I do love disney but it's been a while you know what i mean Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to turn on subscriptions, turn on notifications because we're dropping videos, vlogs, lifting, coaching, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Check the description below. I'm on Twitch almost every single night if you guys want to come kick it. Yes, it is a video game platform, but I'm mostly there to hang out with you guys, have a good time, try to entertain y'all, and chat with you guys. So, conventional polls, this gym looks sick. I don't know where you're at, little bro, but this place looks sick. Pretty good. Pretty good. So similar to our second guy, uh, you're a little just in front of the bar. Oh, that one looks a little bit better. Hips are a little bit lower there, but now you're jerking on a little bit. So lock that back in, lock those lats in, then lean back. We want full tension out of our back and our arms. We want a little bit of that weight. So say you're pulling 275 right here. I don't know what you're pulling, but we want 50 of those pounds in your hand before you begin to pull. We want to think about not chopping. You guys ever try to cut frozen or too cold butter we don't want to chop at that thing we want a nice smooth cut with a butter knife into warm butter that's how we want all our deadlifts to be 
right? So think about smooth cutting that thing. We, we don't want to go gas it, right? If, if anyone ever drove a really fast car, if you've driven a really fast car and you just hit the gas, you're just going to peel out and go nowhere. What we want is that running start. We want to get to uh, slowly put the gas on, let our tires, let rubber touch the cement, and then we're going to gas it. So what I want is that tension, some heavy hands, tension in the low back, weight falling back, heavy hands, and then you're going to hit the gas. You're going to get as tight as humanly possible, then hit the gas. That's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate you all so, so much. Going on a couple trips coming up, heading to Boston, heading to LA, heading to Texas, bunch of footage coming, a bunch of vlogs coming. Thanks again, y'all. Catch you in the next video. Salam Mike. I'm out of here.